All right. Um, moving on, part C um, and D here in our weak acid strong base titration. And as you progress through this problem, it's going to be helpful to keep track of what you've already calculated because we're going to be reusing the same numbers a fair amount. And that's particularly true with relevance to this page because we're still looking at the weak acid reacting with the strong base. So our benzoic acid, sodium hydroxide, and making water and sodium cations, and most importantly for the next step, the conjugate base. Now, we know how much weak acid we started with. We already calculated that back in part B, and that hasn't changed. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel here since you've already calculated that value, right? So be aware of that. A lot of times, some of the information is gonna be used in multiple places. The other thing that's helpful here is this problem is set up in increments. So if we know how many moles of sodium hydroxide were in 10 mils, then there's gonna be twice as many moles in 20 mils. So originally it was 0 0.0025. For this part of the problem, it's gonna be 0 0.0050. So if your problem is going in sequential increments, again, you're, you're not gonna to have to go back and redo that whole problem from scratch. You can build off the information that you already have. Now, in this case, sodium hydroxide is still a limiting reactant, um, but that means this time we're gonna get 0 0.0050 moles of the conjugate base, and 0 0.01 minus 0 0.005, we're also gonna have 0 0.0050 moles of the weak acid left over. And that's an important thing to recognize in a problem, we'll see why in a minute, but when those values are the same, right, that really simplifies things, right? and that's maybe an important part of a titration to be on the lookout for. This is definitely a buffer. We've got the weak acid and the conjugate base, so we can use this sort of modified version of our equilibrium constant expression, where we've got moles of the conjugate base over moles of the weak acid. Now, as you look through the textbook, there's a version here where logs are taken of all these uh, different portions called the henderson hasselbalch equation. And you take the log of Ka, it becomes the pKa, this becomes the pH, right? And you get um, a factor here um, with the ratio. Um, I think that equation is just way more complicated than just uh, varying the equilibrium constant expression we already have. So I think that actually makes the problem harder to understand. Whereas here, it's I think it's pretty straightforward to see where everything has come from here. And that can help you think your way through solving the problem. So if we plug in Ka, right, hydronium ion concentration again is going to be X. Now this term here, this is why this is an interesting uh, position within the titration to think about. They're the same, moles of weak base, moles of weak acid. This whole term vanishes, 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.005, right? That's equal to one. So what we end up with here is 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to X, is equal to the hydronium ion concentration, right? So this is a special part of the titration. This is called halfway to the equivalence point. The equivalence point would be where the moles of base that we've added is equal to moles of acid that we had. It's where we will neutralize all the acid, right? Halfway there is when the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base will be the same, right? At that point, Ka is equal to the hydronium ion concentration, right? Although in, in logs, this would be pKa is equal to pH as well. If you take the negative log of, of each of those. But if you can recognize this part of the titration for what it is, you really don't even have to do the calculation. You can just take your Ka, take your negative log, and get the pH of your solution. So taking the negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth, we get the pH at this point in the titration is equal to 4.20. Now, looking back to part A and B, we started at 2.40 for part A. We added some base to part B, it went up to 3.72, add a little more base, it goes up to 4.20. So it's still going in the right direction. It's going in a fairly small increment. That's what buffers do, is they mediate how much the pH changes. So that, that answer does make sense.
Okay. Now, moving on to part D, um, we'll see part D, we're still in the buffer range. So we won't have to change a whole lot to do part D. So I think we can fit it in this same video without getting too long for downloading and uploading purposes. So same reaction between our weak acid and the strong base sodium hydroxide. Um, and again, the amount of acid in a titration doesn't change. It's still 0 0.0100. Um, an additional 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide would mean our concentration, uh, well, the concentration of base stays the same, but the total moles of base is gonna go up to 0 0.0075, right? So we know it was 0 0.005, for 20 mils, and we calculated earlier it was 0 0.0025 for 10 mils, so you could add those together to get how much would be in 30 mils. Sodium hydroxide is still the limiting reactant, and that means we're going to have 0 0.075 moles of the conjugate base in our solution, and 0 0.0025 moles of the weak acid left over. Right? Non-zero concentration of both of those um, that means it is still a buffer, and that means we can still use this sort of abbreviated version of our equilibrium constant expression, moles of A minus over moles of HA. So 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. Call hydronium ion, ion concentration X again here. Moles of A minus now is 0 0.0075 moles of HA, 0 0.0025. So you can see this is reversed from what it was in part B. So in part B, we've multiplied this by three. Now we're gonna have to divide it by three when we solve this problem. But if we do that, divide both sides by three here, that would leave X on one side and our concentration would become 2.1 times 10 to the minus fifth molar, which is our concentration of hydronium ion. And so going down makes sense. We're adding base. The concentration of acid is going down. Take the negative log of that, and our pH you know, bumps up again a little bit to 4.68. So was 4.2, bumps up to 4.68. It's going in the right direction, and it's going in small increments, which makes sense for a titration in the range where we have a buffer system. Right Now we'll have to see... Does that change when we go on to the next page and part E?